20 years ago today, Michelle Hunley Smith from Eden went out to do some Christmas shopping and never returned. No sign of her car either. She disappeared without a trace. Decades of questions. What happened to Michelle Smith? Where is she? And most importantly, why her? Twenty years later and still no answers. Mother of three, 20 years ago, leaves her home December 9th, 2001 to go Christmas shopping for her three kids. Michelle Lynn Hadley Smith, she was driving a Pontiac Sports Trans Van. License plate, rocking on. Doug and I, we've been taking a look at a lot of the waterways that are potential accident places. You know, so we're gonna take a look at between here and Martinsville with the Walmart. We also have, after contacting Lynn over there who's monitoring the Facebook page for Michelle, is that what if she did make it to Walmart and then later on she ended up going to mom's house before she circled back around, maybe to hide Christmas presents. And with the investigation that we have put together so far, for what we're gonna to do today with our search. We have three to four possible good locations, possibly starting up at Walmart with the river that goes directly behind it. We also then have the possibility of what if she did make it to Walmart, she completed her Christmas shopping and now she wants to go hide the Christmas presents over at her mom's house. So that's about 30 minutes from Walmart and it's just a nice little big loop taking us from her home up to Martinsville, over to mom's, back down through Eden and back home. Which is very common. Like even my wife does that. We'll go Christmas shopping and she'll put them at her sister's house or whatever, you know? Yeah. So we do know that she never did make it to her mom's house that evening. We don't know if she did make it to Walmart, but we're going to get this investigation started right now. daughter believes that something happened to her on her way back home. Quote, he believes, talking about her dad, he believes she just took off and left him and us that night. And I guess that's possible. It's hard to rule out that she just left all of us and started a new life. But there's also something that nags at me that something happened to her on her way back home. Uh, you know, so just a few months ago, um, the local police said that they will not talk about it and confirm to Dateline that this case is still an active investigation. This is the same one that's behind. N n hold on. No, you might have some deeper holes in there. Yes, this is the same one behind Walmart. You know, out of, out of all of this stuff that we've looked at, you know, I looked at... Um, bodies of water near the house and near the house there isn't anything that is even remotely accidental you know the little teeny tiny ponds that are that are on the satellite that i'm able to see in their area um you know by searching those we're definitely looking at foul play there's no in, there there's no accident whatsoever with those bodies of water coming up here on her route to walmart to martinsville Man, this is definitely in the realm of accident. Maybe she, you know, was distracted. Maybe she was tired. It was in the evening when she left. This could definitely be a good 
target here. This is an unusual little river here because you can see how shallow it is right there. You can see the box sticking up there in the middle, but there could very well easily be 15 foot hole, 10 foot hole. You only need five, six feet of water to hide a car. So we're at five feet now. Ooh. Gotta slow that thing down. So we'll do a sonar overview for everybody so they can see what it is that we're looking at and kind of how we're reading this and what we're hoping to find. The first thing that we're doing is we have our live scope over here. It's a Garmin 8612. Anything that's happening in real time, we can actually see like fish swimming by and the depth here. And then you have the different grid lines. Over here, we have more of a picture in time. This is the hummingbird. We're looking at down imaging. So the transducers are just kind of positioned a few inches off. So you'll see just a little variance in depth here. But you're looking at the grid line here, three feet deep here. And then we're casting 50 feet to the left and 50 feet to the right. Anything that is black is water column. And then, we're, and then you have the additional grid lines of 12, 24, 36, 50. So if we end up with a pocket that's down here that's you know deep enough six to eight feet you know 12 feet we've ran into those before that's what we're looking for where a vehicle has the potential to go missing in addition to that the reason why we're on this for an area of interest is because it's right along the road and my big area of interest is once we get down to the other end over here is where that sign was at if it was IQC conditions and you happen to have gone off the road that's where we're making our way down to right now. And you can see where we're at on the river relevant to the road right up on this ledge right here. Yep, so, yeah, so we're going to run this down here and then right about here is where that sign is at. Yeah, and this would be on the northbound route from her home up to Walmart or one of the other shopping areas in Martinsville. So it, it, this is in her direct line of path, again, going on the fact that this may could have been a, an accident. Yeah. after she left and, and when the water is this dark as well and you can't see the bottom you just never know how deep it is until you get in there and like i said you can run into a pocket that's going to be you know 8 10 15 feet deep and you can see the guardrail right there yep but was the guardrail there in 2001 right. and we've also seen vehicles clip guardrails and other cars and flip right over right with our scanning also we want to be scanning between 1.9 and 2.5 miles an hour is the optimum speed to be scanning when you're trolling and looking and using your sonar and that completes the sonar overview so we now have five feet here so i got a little bit deeper and we're still right next to the road here you're looking at 20 feet from road to river Seven feet deep here. Seven feet deep. So that just changed dramatically. This yep. is definitely deep enough to hide a van. Yep, back to three feet. In and twenty years, you gotta think a van is also an additional two at least two feet sunk in. Two feet, so, yeah, two, three. Yeah. Sometimes even four. Right. So seven feet is way more than enough to, to hide this van and still have several feet of water above it. Well, and you can see you, you can't see in here. It's there's no transparency to the water at all. No visibility whatsoever. Here's the sign. So that was my big area of interest right there. The sign up there as we drove past it. And then from here, now the road starts to split further away from the, uh, right. from the river itself. And then we're back down to two and a half feet right here. Let's run it another uh, 100 or 200 yards down. Yeah. And where we started this morning was in right outside of Eden, North Carolina. And right now we're just over the border into Virginia where she would have been on her way to Martinsville. 
Yeah, we're back down to three feet here now, too. Just no more deep pockets at the moment here. Then this would make sense, too, because you can't even get a boat in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because up there, it was complete gravel, ankle deep all the way across. And then down here, it kind of looks like it's getting back to the same way. So this channel could have easily hit something for 20 years. Oh, yeah. Wait, we have a road on the other side, too. Is that a road? Okay, so pull that up. And are there any access points on that side? Look how close that is, the road. So how far down does that one go? Uh... That one goes from right here down to the corner. Okay, so let's keep running it then. Yeah. You can see how this thing does get very deep. You can see this sharp erosion on the whole riverbed all the way down, how steep it is. Uh, it looks like there's a pipeline that comes across here. A little pipeline bridge that they build across waterways. Yeah, I see it. Like of a suspension pipeline. Sneak our way up to and there. And this is a bend right here. This is like a, you're gonna come into this bend and lose control and come over. This is definitely a possible accident. So, yeah, I mean, I have a nice big rock down here. Six feet now. Yeah. Oh. Well, you got the road right there, too. Oh. What road is that? Yeah, that's a different road. Um, that is Fifth Drive. As soon as you get down below this, you're going to have a deeper hole right there. Let's, let's pull this up, and let's ride, and I'll walk it up through. Okay. I have my boots on. Right. Yeah, because anytime you come down through like a uh, rapids like this, on the other side of the rapids, if you've never ran uh, rapids before, you end up with like a pool on the other side that usually ends up getting deeper. Good job. Yeah, we're still at nine and a half feet here. That's impressive. So you can see how the more black we have, the deeper it gets, and it's coming back up. So now we're gonna start getting shallower. I mean, it's up there, just not. Ooh, 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 ooh. What do we have here? I think that's a rock. We're gonna go verify that, but that kind of looks like a... Um, we'll, we'll definitely know once we hit it on down yeah, scan. Yeah, we'll hit it sideways too. Sideways. Get a live scan on it too. I mean, we have some big rocks in here, but that's just all by itself right there. Alright, so let's see where it's at. So we'll come back over here where it's deeper. Alright, so we're coming back into deeper water. Okay, here it is. Oh, that's a rock. Definitely. Yep. That's, that's, that's where we end. We don't go any further. Are you sure? Yeah. From here to there, it definitely bottoms out like ankle deep up there. It's spraying me. Yep. I feel good about searching this though. Yeah. 
mean, it all makes sense. Like I said, this, this honestly, and looking at everything and looking at all over, this is number one target. The most direct. Yes, for yes, and then we have behind Walmart is yes, next. Right. So we're hitting the hole here. You know, all these cases are very sad. You know, but when you get a a mom who left her three children and husband to go Christmas shopping. Yeah, for something that's, good. That's, that's very, uh, it's very heartbreaking. You know, they all are, but it's, it's tough to hear, you know, a mom trying to go out and do something good and, had, you know, never trying, been, yeah, just trying never to been heard from again. Roughly about a mile down this road here, the main highway right here, that goes up to Martinsville. Um, nothing there. We also took it down through some rapids yeah. and into another section of road where I believe it's Fifth Drive comes along the highway, the river here, and nothing. I mean, there's some pockets, nine foot, six foot, seven foot here and there, but. through that foliage so then that takes us back to like where the dam was at and so now I want to start thinking if we've taken out the accident scenes from her house to Walmart what are we left with for hey I'm just possible suicide possible and we're left with the weird bodies of small bodies of water near her home which there's three or four very small ones I mean, uh, I mean, around the home, closest to the home, we have four potential bodies of water. Or we can head towards mom's house and take a look at the two other potential over the bridge into the Dan River or into the Smith River as well. So I also have a, I don't know if he's an EMT or if he's a police officer or a reserve officer, but it appears as though they have some interest as to, am I going to be searching the waterway at 14 towards Virginia? So on 14. That's that Dan River. That's, it no, the, it was the Smith River. Smith River. Smith River. Mm -hmm. oh. On 14. Hello. Hey, it's uh, Jared. Did you go but Hold on. I'm stumbling on my words. How are you? <laughs> Did you still have- I'm good, how are you? Good. So we have uh, currently done a search as we were coming in on the 220. There's like a uh, car lot that's off to the right there next to the Smith River. There's a couple of deep pockets in there, but most of it is two and a half to three feet deep. Um, we came up uh, with some interest back here behind Lowe's and Walmart with a potential dumping ground or you know accident and or suicide. Uh, no access here. So then that takes us to where do we go next? You know, do we start looking at this as a, are we dealing with a suicide? I never want to say this is foul play because my wife hates that we even think about that. 
um, or, uh -huh. or an accident. But then uh, you had mentioned last night also about 14, which is the only 14 I'm aware of is just down there next to Smith River in Eden. Am I correct? Yeah, so 14, the only thing I can see is, I mean, if she ran off in the river on the way to go for Eden to get to Rosen. Now, um, now you've, you've driven that route many times. I mean, do you feel like there's a potential of driving off the road there into the into the Smith? I mean, in 2001, I would definitely say so. Um, we had a fatality there um, probably five years ago where an EMS worker was off work and wrecked and ran off into the river. So it's possible. Okay. Um, but. And do you, do you know the depth of the river there? Do I know what? Do you know the depth of the river at that location? I do not. Um, that river, I mean, that flows into meeting the dam, the dam, and then it all flows into Draper down here at 700 Bridge, which goes towards Ruffin, which, is, if I'm not mistaken, that's where mom lives, right? Yeah, yeah, over in uh, Ruffin. I mean, I would say since you already have evidence of a vehicle going off into the Smith on 14, I would say that we should go check that out down there in Eden. We do me a favor and drop me a pin as to where you guys had that uh, EMS call with your uh, EMT guy that went into the okay. river. And then uh, we can take a look at that location. Just like I said, I think I want to take a look at the Dan River too as if she did make her way over towards mom's house. Okay, sounds good. All right, sounds good, thanks. Thanks, bye. Sound like a plan? So listen, I know that we have circumstantial evidence now. Like your heart is 100% not in this now. Like Jared, you're wasting your time even getting in the water now and looking any further. Yeah. I mean, I, I have my suspicions. When we started this morning, there were some red flags. And, you know, after us, you know, finding out corroborated information that justified my suspicions overwhelmingly I'm super confident that Look. this is not a good situation that that something bad happened and, and, and I'm there with you I'm like 95% sure and they're with you but for me if we were to leave the area right now and like not even search anymore like we have you know two more locations to search you know and for me I just have to be like what if we st are still dealing with an accident this location is not an accident you know this location is a you know this, this is a suicide location but in my heart I don't believe we're dealing with suicide 100% no and no. I'm 95% on board with you that this is straight up foul play she was murdered and there's reasons why she was taken out oh big big time big time um, everyone knows that she was a loving mom and she left behind three children. She's not gonna disappear. There's, there's, there's absolutely no hint to that by anyone involved with the case. All right. I need to get in the water myself to do this. I mean, and, you know, and if you just need to hang out in the RV, just take a walk or whatever you wanna do, or if you wanna jump in the boat with me, just to keep me company. I mean, whatever you're most comfortable with. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm here, you know, I'm, I'm getting in the boat. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna finish this search. All right. You know, for, it's yeah, just, for, for me, I it's just, just it's just tough. Like when we know, like I had my suspicions, and then when, you know, s s speaking with an unidentified source, corroborated all of that, overwhelmingly corroborated it. Well, and, and even with the foul play portion of this, she's not in the water. I know this. You know this. But I don't want to be wrong right. either. Yeah, but we're here. We, we have to check. 
you know it's just very spooky like 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 i was telling you a few minutes ago like i almost feel her here like like we're we're as close to her justice that she's ever gotten since she's been gone in 20 years right but you know at the same time you know but then on the flip side of this also, you know, AWP is taking note that we just simply don't move forward with foul play cases. We can't. And, know, I, and, and, and I would really wish that I could go into more detail, you know, for everyone that's going to see this. Because they're going to want to know those details. It's just, man, they're just going to have, like, oh, I wish, I just so wish that they could know what we know, right. you know. But, you know, in the end, you know, I do wish that we could just, like, dexter this thing up, like, just go in, balls to the wall, and just do street justice. Yes. What, what needs to be done? Because yeah. I'm confident, you're confident that we know exactly who and potentially where. Absolutely. But there's nothing we can do about it. But and, let's and, check. And, and I think that the law enforcement has this information, but right now, yeah. it's all circumstantial. They right. cannot, with 100% confidence, say, boom, we have a solid case. DA, you got to take this case. Right, right. And they're not going to do that. They're, they're not going to show their hand unless they, they can, and they don't have a strong hand. Yeah. They're, they're ruining it for themselves of ever getting justice once they do that, and it falls through the cracks. Yeah. The circumstantial is just so hard to prove in these cases because they have to convict without a, beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. We have somebody else from um, another agency that just showed up as well, so I'm going to discuss this off camera with them as well. Uh, that we've had multiple sources that we have spoken with today now. Yeah. That we didn't have this information this morning when we started. Yeah. But, all right, appreciate you being in the water with me. Let's put the boat in. Yeah, so then see, like watch these leaves right here. Uh -huh. So see how everything's pushing into here? Yeah. So if a vehicle is going to come down into here, it's then not going to push off into the left. It's only going to stay to the right there. And I wouldn't put it any further. Like this already is extreme, in my opinion, for this type of a flow for a yeah, current. Coming down river off that ramp. Yeah. Still like so clean. See here, nothing. Beautiful river bottom. We're at 2.2 feet, 2.9, but still very, very clean. Anything the size of a vehicle is gonna stick out like a sore thumb.
further confirmation into our suspicions, we have a uh, law enforcement that has also reached out to us. They heard that we were in town, uh, kind of ran the scenario of what we feel on, about this case. And the thing is, is they said, yeah, that's pretty much our assessment as well, off the record. Yeah. I did mention to them as to where our last location was that we were going to go search. They did say that that is an area of interest that they have not put eyes in the water. It's definitely something that needs to be checked out. We were talking to Brooke earlier today, the uh, EMT, and she said that the bridge that is there now is not the original bridge that was there back in 2001. But back then, it was more of a covered bridge that you were not going to be, be able to get off the bridge. So what we're looking for on this, Doug, is are there any access points coming up to it that we need to check out? Okay. I'm getting down there. It's impossible. Yeah. Even if there was an old bridge right here. And you can see the bottom here, too. Now it's full straight up. Yes, I just think about like how heart wrenching it is for you know the uh, children to grow up without their mom, just always wondering, you know, do they also wonder and suspect, you know, the same thing that we, the same conclusion that we've come to as well. And just the difficulty of every year at Christmas time, how difficult it's going to be for them and that they've just not been able to celebrate in the same way that those of us that do celebrate Christmas. You know, we come out here and a lot of times we're working cases that, you know, it's suicide, it's vehicles in the water. But as we come out here to this one, like it just has like a different sense of the hurt and the pain. And, you know, you, you talk about you know, jumping off the bridge or this is the bridge to come and kill yourself and I'm getting ready to jump. So many things are like written out here that it just kind of like brings it all together with the pain, even though the today's case is not something that I believe is suicide. We do work a lot of suicide cases. And with this bridge, just looking at it, you know that this is a suicide bridge. Sir, who's jumping? Oh, we're not jumping, we're just uh, You know, even the guy that just, you know, pulled up, like who's jumping today? You know, it's almost like it's, like almost like it's, almost like it's expected out here. So I just think about the pain as we work these cases, you know, and those that do end up jumping in the water that are never found, you know, and those that do drive into the water that eventually may be found, and those that just are not, and the people that they leave behind. It's just a really difficult thing. And this bridge really puts all that into perspective all in one place as you just look around. Yeah, there's a lot of emotion written on this bridge. You know, and, and in regards to Michelle, you know, there's somebody out there that knows something. Somebody. Someone knows something. Someone that did it knows what they did. And there's three children that are left without their mother. Yep. And other family members. Yeah. Her mother. Yeah. It's not just the kids. Yeah. So this bridge definitely you know, rules out any place that the van would have ended up. I wish that we could solve them all. As soon as we turn the camera off here, we're actually going to go meet up with another detective off the record. We appreciate you being here. We come out here volunteering our time for the families. We don't charge them a dime. And it's because of you, the viewers, that help support everything that we're doing. It starts by liking and subscribing. That's all we ask of you. If by chance you have the ability to do so, we do have merchandise available that helps fund these trips as we travel across the U.S. working the cold cases, as well as if you would like to make a donation, we have donation links over there as well. Until next time, we're hoping to solve the next one. We'll see you down the road. Thanks, bye-bye.